Let's see uh, where we are. Uh, so we are in the uh, third week of our agenda. And up to this point, uh, we have been creating a, um, we created a, uh, a Spring Boot uh, application uh, that uh, is, uh, we're using as a server. And, and we have a, um, uh, it's a remote server that is hosting all our static content, HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, jQuery, all hosted on the same server, the Java server. Uh, and this uh, Java server is, is up to this point just hosting just our, our static content. And it will remain so for, for the next couple of weeks. Eventually, this, uh, this Java server, uh, we, we're going to uh, expand its uh, functionality to uh, host also uh, data. Right? So we're going to be able to hit this Java server and ask it for data. Right? We're going to create some web services. Uh, and we're going to retrieve data from the web service and then render that data in, the, in a client, right? in some HTML client. Uh, and then we'll add also access to a database. So that same Java server we're using today, we'll, we'll use JPA to map it to, to some data model uh, and, and hit some uh, relational database to, 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 um, to integrate with some data storage. Okay? But for now, it'll, it'll just be a, uh, a hosted uh, server hosting some, uh, some uh, static content. Um, actually, for the, for, the, for the time being, in the, uh, in the next assignment or two, uh, we're, we're going to leave the Java server alone for a while. All right? We'll come back to it in a, in a couple of weeks uh, to host data for us. It'll be our prime uh, source of data. So for the next couple of weeks, uh, we're going to instead going to create another uh, type of uh, client. Right? right now, the client that we've been building is a JavaScript, jQuery, HTML uh, client. Right? Um, and uh, having its own hard-coded data inside of JavaScript and rendering this hard data uh, uh, in, in the DOM, updating it, and, and, and you provided a user interface that allowed you to manipulate that data structure in the browser, and then it changed the DOM uh, accordingly. But if you refresh the, the, the page, all of that was gone. Right? It, it went back to its original static content. Uh, so that eventually is uh, it's going to change when we use Java as a, as a permanent storage um, uh, technique. So today, today we're going to introduce uh, React, and that's going to take us for, for the next couple of weeks, React and, and then Redux. And uh, um, so for, the, for this, is, this is going to be living in a completely separate um, uh, project. Right? It'll be a React project. It's going to be hosted in its own uh, server, Node.js server, uh, even though we don't know, we don't, we don't yet uh, have used Node.js just yet. Um, it's going to be a Node.js uh, 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 server. We, 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 don't, we don't really need to know about Node.js that much. Only, only a couple of commands here and there to, to build and, and deploy and, and run a couple of build scripts and whatnot. Uh, but other than that, we don't really need to know much about uh, Node.js just yet. We'll come back to it uh, in full force a little later. Uh, but for now, we're going to create a project, a React project. It's going to be hosted in its own Node.js server. We're going to deploy it in Heroku in its own Node.js Heroku server running remotely on Node.js, uh, on, on Heroku. So we're going to have, you know, at some point, we're going to have two servers running at the same time, Java uh, providing data services, and uh, React running on its own Node.js uh, server. It's, it's not uncommon uh, that uh, clients and, and their servers are hosted in two separate, uh, in two separate um, instances. Right? And they talk to, to each other anyway. They would have to talk to each other using HTTP, regardless whether they would be even hosted in the same, by the same uh, server. Uh, so yeah, and so this is going to be also having its, its own uh, Git repository. It's, 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 uh, um, it's going to be its own thing. Right? Uh, same thing for, for next week, Redux. Uh, both of these are, are uh, not yet going to be using any uh, Java server or any, any uh, storage, uh, uh, permanent storage. Uh, facilities, not not just yet. Uh, so it's going to have it's going to be using same thing like we did for jQuery, its own hard coded JSON data that, it's gonna, that we're going to provide as a JSON file to get you started with IDs this time. Uh, uh, then uh, when we when we come back from um, then we're going to have a break in Columbus, uh, Columbus Day week. Uh, uh, but then when we come back, we're going to start adding uh, web services. So, so we'll come back to our Java server that we had abandoned for, for a bit. Uh, and, and now the, uh, all, all, the, all the updates, uh, inserts, updates that we have been doing in, uh, in Redux and in, uh, in, in, in React, 
Russia is going to be sending those changes to a web service uh, that's going to make those changes not permanent, but they're going to at least store it in the server. Right? The server is going to have its own memory space and it's going to store the, uh, the data model in that memory space. And it will have a longer span. Right? If you refresh the page, we would still have the content because it's being stored in the, in the server's memory. If you restart the server, then it will be all gone, right? Because we're not permanently storing this anywhere, right? It will only live in the, in the server's memory. Uh, later on, when we introduce JPA, then we will have a permanent storage um, a technique, right? Which will allow us to store it permanently in a, in a, uh, in a relational uh, database. Uh, so so you know, we'll, we'll, we'll build on the same thing uh, for, for a little bit. So, up to, so when, we, when we get here, we'll be running two GitHub repositories uh, deploy to two different Heroku or AWS instances. Make sense? Uh, when we get to uh, Angular, this will be a, an additional uh, project. It'll be an Angular project, uh, again, hosted on Node.js. So there'll be three uh, servers running around, right? Two Node.js and one Java. Everybody talking to everybody, right? Everybody ho uh, send, sending data uh, across uh, to each other. The Angular will be using, Angular will be reading from the JPA, a server from the Java server. It'll be a read-only uh, access to, to the JPA. Um, uh, this is, we'll be implementing the, the uh, student's version of the application. Up to this point, we'll be uh, up to, up to uh, uh, all the, through week number seven, we'll be implementing the faculty's uh, 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 application, right? Uh, and then we'll switch over to the student side using Angular, uh, Node.js, and, uh, and MongoDB, okay? And we'll talk about that a little bit a little later. All right, any, any questions? Yes? Why do we have separate server for client and separate server for Java? So, what, 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 what so it's, it's very common that uh, in large projects, each one would be its own GitHub repository, right? And, and you could you would create dependencies between the two, depending how you want to deploy it, right? It could be that you, you, uh, the, Java, the Java includes the, uh, the, the, the client uh, and uh, embed it in, as part and, and then host it inside of that Java server. Or, or typically, also, it could be its own little Node.js that hosts uh, only the client all by itself. Especially when you have large applications, uh, it's, it's very common to, to split them up into multiple different components. Even you know, entirely different development teams work only on the client, and a whole development team just working only on the server. Well, right? Kind of to yeah. Well, not, not in particular, but yes, that's, that's where that, that comes from, right? Where, where you want to create as much, as, at least a dependency between the two as much as possible. The only dependency between the two will be a, uh, a, um, a, a common um, uh, API, right? They, they all agree on that uh, this is going to be our, our HTTP API uh, with REST, ser REST services, with posts, puts, deletes, and gets for uh, modifying all the... Uh, so, so the, the basic idea would be that you could create your own client, right, as long as you know the RESTful API. This happens to be one particular uh, client, right? So anybody who has access to that API would be able to create an, a, a, a client uh, connected to that, to that REST of, RESTful service. And how does the Well, typically there would be a token that would go that go between the two that is generated by the server, and that token would then have to be uh, shared amongst uh, amongst anybody who's who's, uh, who's I I connected to, to them, and that token would be would be uh, unauthorized every so often, and you have to create ask for a new for a new token. Uh, but we're not going to get into in, into those issues. But typically you would do that. Yeah. All right. 